sibling bandanas is about um it features Jesse and Ace, two orphans. Um for the previous listeners, um yeah, they're pretty much orphanage orphans at an orphanage and I guess that's most of the backstory you need to know other than um Jesse she lost her parent. Her parents are dead. <laughs> She's a Batman. <laughs> she lost her parents in an accident, but she survived. <laughs> but her nerves are kind of shot from the accident. You need to know that little Aww. bit of backstory. Aww. So, yeah. Boy, that's not fun. Yeah. It's okay. But it's what enables her to do random stuff and feel no pain. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess there's that, but. She's like I mean, the name of a character whose name I cannot say because his name contains a curse word, but it starts with kick and it ends in butt. Uh-huh. <laughs> you said butt. Uh, but, yeah. Butt. And, oh, another little tidbit. Uh, we had a previous story before this. It's where um, Jesse and I say they didn't get along at first because of the thing I mentioned earlier, Jessie being so rough, she can't really feel what she's doing. So she's, you know, trying to play with other kids, but she's really rough, you know, because she's, that's just her. So, (laughs) yes. Mm -hmm. But she's like, you know, trying to play with Ace because little kids like to play with each other. But, you know, (laughs) she actually, actually like pushes him off the swing and, you know, he gets really hurt and they don't get along at first. And since Jessie's so rough, she has to, you know, sit in time out and she's just not allowed to play with the kids until Ace, he comes by and um, hears Jessie crying from her room and, he starts reading to her from his storybook, and then they become friends over that. And since neither of them have a real brother or sister, they're like, oh, you want to be brother and sister? And they're like, yeah. So it's all cute. All right. So shall we, oh, we, shall yeah. we start then? I thought you were looking yeah, at the They're all backstory. Uh, no, so. I, I, okay. I, the light wasn't lighting up. Okay. All righty. Say the title right, or I will hurt you. <laughs> Sibling <laughs> bandanas. <laughs> there we go. That is the meanest thing. I've Every kid. Ca- <laughs> wait, what's, what's the thing? Oh, Say the it. following is a work of fiction. Any resemblance to people living or dead is completely coincidental. Before you start, I know who you sound like. You sound like Meg from Hercules. I do. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah, random. You knew. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you knew. Anyway, go I'm on. Go watch Hercules. Ace was walking down the hall. He had just left the boys' side of the orphanage. It was rather early in the morning, but it was a very special morning, so he didn't mind waking up early. His black hair was a little messy, and he was wearing a small t-shirt and shorts. He needed a new t-shirt as his body was growing now, and the t-shirt was slowly becoming too small. Each morning, it became a little harder to fit into it. Just then, the little boy stopped at the sight of Marigold, an orphanage worker in her early 30s. She spoke to Ace with a smile. My, aren't you up early today, Ace? Why is that? Ace looked up at the friendly worker, returning the smile. It's Jessie's birthday. I don't really have any real presents for her, but I wanted to spend the whole day playing with her. Marigold smiled and knelt down to Ace's eye level to speak to him properly. That sounds like a wonderful gift, Ace. I can tell how happy... I can't tell you how happy I am that you and Jessie get along now. She really needed someone like you. Ace smiled. He didn't fully understand what Marigold was talking about, but he did know that both he and Jessie were very lonely before the other came around, and now they weren't. He liked being her brother. It made him happy. Thank you, Miss Marigold. You are most welcome. (coughs) Marigold replied as she ruffled Ace's hair. Here, I'll go check and see if she's up yet. And with that, Marigold walked off into the girls' section of the orphanage. Ace sat down patiently. He wondered what they should play with today. Maybe some chalk drawings, blowing bubbles, or maybe even the sandbox if it wasn't too crowded. Good morning, bestest brother ever! Ace jolted as he turned around in his chair to see Jessie's smiling face. (laughs) Good morning and happy birthday, little sis. May I have a birthday hug? Sure, but gentle, okay? Jessie happily nodded and embraced Ace after he got up from his seat. She couldn't feel the texture of his shirt or skin, but she felt the warmth of another person, and it was a great feeling to her. Just to have another person close was all she needed sometimes. So would you like to go play a little before breakfast, Jessie? Would I ever? Well, then let's not wait any longer. (coughs) And with that, the two children dashed out into the playground right outside the orphanage. Marigold could easily keep an eye on the kids through the many windows that let sunlight in. The two played for a few hours. They drew dragons and princesses from Ace's storybook with chalk and made sandcastles complete with flags made of sticks and stray leaves. A small rock made for a good night and pebble were st- pebbles were stand-in peasants. There were many laughs to be had between the two. Of course, there were breaks for breakfast and lunch, but after that they got right back to playing. 
Luckily for them, it was Saturday and there weren't any of their classes scheduled for the day. As the afternoon sun radiated in the sky, the two sat in the sun, taking turns blowing bubbles. My turn, my turn. Okay, okay. I have to go to the bathroom anyway. I'll be right back. Jesse nodded cheerfully and waved to Ace as he walked off. She then got back to the bubbles and dunked the wand into the soapy mixture. With a soft breath, she blew a big bubble. It floated in the air and she chased it. Giggling, she looked over when the bubble popped. Something caught her eye in the window to the inside of the main room. It wasn't one of the workers. Jessie knew all of them already, so this must be a new person. Jessie quickly set down the mason jar of bubble mixture and ran inside. Once inside, she happily looked up at the new woman. The newcomer was talking to Marigold, and Jessie waited her turn. As she finished, she glanced down at Jessie. Well, hello there, little one. Hi there, pretty lady. Oh, aren't you a sweetie? Hey, guess what? What? <gasps> Today's my birthday. I'm seven years old now. Well then, happy birthday. Oh, thank you very much. Marigold spoke up. This is Jessie. As you can see, she's quite eager and friendly. <laughs> I can see that. The new woman began digging around in her purse. Hey, Jessie, do you like the color red? I love all the colors. Well then here, why don't you take these as a birthday present? And with that, the woman held out two bright red bandanas. They were neatly folded. Jessie's eyes grew wide. <gasps> Those are beautiful! I love them! Thank you so much, nice pretty lady! <laughs> You're welcome, the woman said, handing them to her. She had planned to use those bandanas to decorate a few of her collectible stuffed animals back home, but she figured they'd bring more joy to this little girl. Have a wonderful seventh birthday, little Jessie. I will. Jessie then dashed back out. As soon as Jessie was out the door, she returned to the spot where Ace and she were playing earlier. Ace was back and he looked at Jessie a little confused. Uh, where did you go? There was this nice pretty lady there and I said hi to her and told her it was my birthday. And then she gave me these awesome red bandanas. Whoa, those are cool. What are you going to do with them? I'm going to wear one and I'm going to give you the other one to wear. Wait a minute, Jessie. Those are your birthday presents. It's not my birthday. Oh, I know, but I want us both to have one. Why? Because it's more fun that way. This way we can match. Now hold still. Jessie then swung behind Ace and swiftly strung the red bandana around his neck. She pulled it tight and tried to tie it. Yeah, Jessie, too tight, too tight. Oh, oh, sorry. She loosened it a bit and then tied it off with a knot. Then she spun around. Okay, there is yours, and now... Jessie then pulled out the other and wrapped it around her head. Her short plum hair poked out from underneath it. Her turquoise eyes lit up at the sight of the two of them matching. <gasps> we look so cool! These are like matching shirts, or friendship necklaces, or... Oh, 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 I got it! They're sibling bandanas! Ace looked down at his bandana and then back up at Jessie's. He'd never heard of such a thing, but hey, why not? Sure, sibling bandanas they are. Yeah. Yeah. That was adorable. Aww. Your your pretty that. lady voice was cute. It, it was. I, yeah, once I realized that I had that part that I needed to be hearing. <laughs> uh, I apologize it's, for that. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. But it was funny because I was like, oh, Christina, you did a good job on um on uh, Ace's part where he was like getting choked. <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that was great. I, I gave yeah. a thumbs up. No, I, yeah. then. <laughs> I wanted to give you a thumbs up, but I was like holding the paper. I'm like, I'll give you a thumbs up. Oh, there, thumbs there goes my paper. Now I don't Everywhere. know what I'm going to say. I, I hey, wrote this, but I don't know what comes next. <laughs> yeah, you're so forgetful. Oh, I know. <laughs> who are you? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> who am who I? Am I? <laughs> Christina, who am I? Who are you? What? what? Who am I? In the next Christina? Word, no, Michelle. Just, who am I? I'm Michelle. Yeah. Well, then who are you? <laughs> you know who I am? That was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll explain later. Okay. Anyway, no, we won't. <laughs> Wait. No, we won't. Am I, am I in this one? Uh, let me see. Is it? Uh, no, you're not. No one likes you. No. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me I'm All in right. that one? Oh, man. Oh, yeah, you're in this one. Why didn't you tell me? Uh, I told you now. You're yeah, a yeah, terrible Georgia, brother. Georgia, are you going to be in this one or am I? Uh, I'll do it. Okay, cool. Just because I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, this one's called True Music. And it follows the story of Aiden, um, who we've had several skits about before. He's um, he's actually he's a musician, but actually his whole thing is uh, he's deaf. He's like a deaf musician, but he had hearing up until age 11. And this is kind of just the story of his first music le lesson. So, yeah. <laughs> do do you think we need to give? <laughs> Why are you laughing at me, Jamie? I, I'm no. Michelle turned into a lizard. <laughs> 
She I does have know. the time. She did. Oh wow, she did. I did. Yeah, this. that's all right. Oh, okay. She's actually okay. a tiny little gecko blue thing. lizard. <laughs> okay. Okay. Do you think there's any more? I thought it was green for I, that. You're wearing like, blue. Is that a good okay, pretty blue. good summary of Aiden? Would you say? I think it's good. Yeah. About his mom and dad. Blue and green. Right. Oh no, it's not about his mom and dad, is it? No. Well, I mean, it's. I mean, his mom just dropped him off at music. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Also, Aiden's mom and dad. We did skits about them. You know, falling in love. And it was Jamie married. Yes, and, and Jamie, Jamie married. Jamie was my pretty lady. Yeah. Pretty lady. Okay. And then they got married and had Aiden. And so. this is Aiden. All right. So we're just jumping all around with the story, but you guys are going to like it. <coughs> Here's True Music by Georgia McCartney. All right. Yeah. And as stated before, the following is a work of fiction. Any resemblance to people living or dead is completely coincidental. Right, Georgia? Right, Jamie. <laughs> Aiden and his mom arrived at his music teacher's home. Today was Aiden's first lesson. The house was quaint, with old cream and flower print wallpaper and classic lampshades. In the middle of her main room sat a large, grand piano. It was colored a beautiful shade of pure white and had a a vase of fresh red roses sitting on its side. Aiden was feeling nervous. Just then, he heard a voice. Come in, come in. Are you my new student for today? Aiden shook his head nervously, looking up at his instructor. Uh, I'm Aiden Blaze. The woman had messy brown and gray hair that was pulled up into a bun with an intricately detailed hair clip. The older lady pushed up her glasses and looked down at Aiden. Good to meet you. I'm Mrs. Bells. We must get started right away. With that, the woman gestured Aiden over to the piano in the middle of the room. With shaky feet, Aiden walked anxiously over to the red velvet seat near the piano. Once he sat down, Mrs. Bells took a seat beside him. The music instructor then wound up a small ivory metronome and placed it on top of the piano. It made a soft, clicking noise that shattered the silence of the large room. Now, play for me, dear child. Aiden gulped. He was very tense. The little boy had never played in front of a stranger before. His little hand shook as he struggled to remember what keys to play. Finally, his fingers landed on the right places, and muscle memory helped him along as he began to play. The room was filled with a simple, harmonious tone, until Aiden hit the wrong key. He paused as sweat dripped down his face. An awkward silence hung in the air. He messed up. He messed up. Was he going to be kicked out of class now? Panicked, Aiden looked up to his teacher. Her face was stern as she spoke. Keep going. You're not done yet. Aiden nodded and resumed where he had left off, pressing down each key in the way he memorized it, until another mistake. Aiden was so distressed he couldn't help but cry out. Uh, I'm sorry. Don't kick me out. Why are you so scared to play, dear child? Aiden hesitated. He wasn't sure why. Maybe it was how big and fancy this room was, or the fact that he was playing for someone new. Why are you afraid of making mistakes? A knot formed in Aiden's throat. I'm afraid if I make too many mistakes, no one will like me anymore. That if I mess up, people won't listen to me. So? What what do you mean, so? That'd be terrible. Dear child, even if you had no one to listen to you, would you still love music? I don't... I don't know. If your listeners are willing to abandon you over just a few mistakes... They weren't very good listeners in the first place. Aiden, you need to have a passion for music. If you, just play to ple- if you just play to please others, you won't get very far. So play a tune that you love. Play a tune from your very heart. True listeners will love it and the mistakes that come with it. And you'll learn to love it too. Aiden paused. He didn't fully understand all of what his teacher said, but it made him feel better somehow. Now... Take it from the top, and no stopping this time. Aiden nodded and began to play once more. The end. That was adorable. (laughs) That was adorable. (laughs) Did I do okay? I'm not used to being him when he's little. It's okay. (laughs) Yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah, (laughs) you can tell I wrote it because it was adorable. (laughs) It's just got my signature on it. (laughs) Right? George McCartney, adorable. (laughs) Adorable. The teacher struck me as like that weird, mystical, old, wise, shaman teacher. Right? And she was going to turn into an owl. (laughs) (laughs) You're like... Are you secretly like? Is she an owl, Georgia? Huh? Does she have wings? No. I know everybody has wings. Are you secretly some doesn't. kind of? Oh. Are you secretly some kind doesn't. of mystic, cr- mystic I, I spirit? Should, I, I should though. Here just, to send me just, spirit guide sorry. wisdom. 
<laughs> just just because of that joke, I should just you know make her just like half owls. owl or something. Yeah. Just, do, it. Just do, it. do it, do it. I'm an owl character. You do? I barely the, use her. Her name though. is Eve. I need to see I her. like Eve. Yeah. Yeah. Are she looks it? a lot like me, actually. Yeah. She treats Miko oh, cool. like he's eight, just like Russell. <laughs> well, Russell's Russell's a Russell's a Russell. You, you can't. I don't know how you describe Russell. He's just Russell. <laughs> he's. You'll see. Russell's actually in this next <laughs> script. Speaking of which, Speaking of Russell, so right right there. <laughs> that's really loud. <laughs> that is extremely loud. That's okay. Actually, that was, that okay. Actually, that was my turn. That was it, my it's bad. A, it's okay. But right. it was kind of funny how we were talking about like, oh, all of Georgia's scripts are cute. Well, this next one I like co-authored, and it's not cute. <gasps> yeah, it's totally not cute. It's <gasps> oh, yeah. no, it's cute in its own weird way, but it also got some dark spots to I it. I know. So it's like, and George's Georgia like, this is so sketchy. Dark stuff. Yeah. I was holding it up and I'm like, Christina, this is this is pretty risque for me. Pretty and you're like, Georgia, it's, it's fine. <laughs> you you can show your ankles on air. <laughs> <laughs> I mean No you can't. No one will see them. You, you could. There's so many right like, now, right now. You huh? could see the skin on my wrist. <gasps> Christina, <gasps> stop it! You there are people gonna shock by. our our listeners at home. They can't see the scandal going on, but they know what's happening. Is. You're one talk. I can see your shoulders. Oh, jeez! <gasps> no, those don't look at me. Are those freckles on your shoulder? My oh, lady. Oh, she needs to be stoned. Uh, no, that escalated quickly. Not that kind of stoned. Well, but anyway, well. goodness. Well, but speaking of, I'll I'll explain this one. Okay, since, go ahead. Yeah, um, I've been doing. Jamie Jamie's, Jamie's kind of doing her thing oh, right now. You're good. I'm just going through. I know. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Anyway. Do your thing. Let's look at the... Jamie, look at the lovely picture she drew. Uh, audience, look at the this lovely picture. Don't the yeah. audience, Christina. Audience, look at oh, what we're we doing. Could jerk. Oh, we could upload it to Facebook. We could. It's kind of bad, though, but... Let's no, like, I'm just the artist. Okay, okay, so I'll let you guys know what happens. Uh, like, what happened is, as we were uh, writing the script out, I chose to draw our two characters, and um, mm-hmm. our two characters are Russell and Quinn. And I'm really used to drawing Russell because, you know, he's my character. But Christina's character, Quinn, he's, you know, like in his 30s. He's not really gruff, but he's, you know, got a little facial stubbery and kind of like he's black, really short hair. Short he's so hair. beautifully he's average. Hard to, he's hard yes. to draw <laughs> because he's got really short hair. Mm-hmm. And I think you did a good job of it, though. Oh, thank you. So I, I tried, but I'm being hard on myself. I'm like, no, no. It's but Christina okay, loves it. I so. can't draw short hair. It's but no, a, hopefully we'll have that up on the. On the, the only kind of short hair I've drawn out was Hawkeye's because sure. I've had a lot of practice with Hawkeye. <laughs> sure, I'll send I'll, I'll send it to you and we can have it up on the actual Facebook. Oh, Facebook pop in. You Facebook. advertise Facebook. Facebook. Um, you could like us on Facebook at Stark Actors on the Airways, and and you are listening to Stark Actors on the Airways on yes. WR. MU 91.1, the radio voice of Mount Union. The radio voice of oh, Mount, Mount Union. Union. You gotta say it like that. Mount Union. Mount Union. Okay, so a little back up. Union. Whoa, we're not having Pokemon <laughs> so. cry battles of Mount Union here. <laughs> yes. Too bad. Aww. Anyway, a little bit back around story from this one because it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of really complicated. Stop laughing. Yes. This is not a fun place. Let's make this clear to our listeners. Yes, sorry, yes. Our, so, um, Russell, you guys already met him. He needs a journalist. Yeah, oh. Russell's a 28-year-old well, really journalist. I, I'm not sure how old he is in this, but I think it's a little bit before. He's a little younger. He, he's in his 20s, but yeah, yeah that's all you need so to know. So, my character, Quinn, you guys have never met before, but when Georgia was like, sure, I'll come to your guys' last show, and then... I didn't write anything for it. I'm a terrible person. It's, it's okay. okay. My... <laughs> But um, she's like, who do you want to be? And I was like, I miss my character, That's totally Quinn. That's totally how I sound. <laughs> and then, oh. Um, <laughs> it's okay. And then, <laughs> I almost don't want to go. <laughs> and so I wanted to be this guy. Yeah. And he is a con artist. Nice. He steals things, which is why George is like, oh, we're scared. <laughs> I know. Stealing? Should we mention that on air? <laughs> Kleptomaniacs, what a disaster. <laughs> but he's kind of like, uh, he does it. I don't know how to explain it. But it's his job, and he literally does everything he takes, he, he gets money for, and he li- he doesn't buy, like, nice things or a nice house for it. He literally only buys, like, food and shelter, and he goes from place to place. And he's never had a relationship before because he's so concentrated in his work. Forever alone. <laughs> Forever alone. Forever thief. Aww. Pretty much. And this is his story. Well, kind of. I was just like, what? We, we, we were like... You know, Christina, it's what? also Russell's story. <laughs> I know, but wow. I mean... Yeah, like, his you, co-story. You guys... Co- 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 <laughs> but we were... We were uh, yeah, say, anyway, say you, you, get to, you get to know him by... Uh, we were just like, let's have them... 
Hey, I was like, hey, Giorgio, would they be in a bar? Yeah, sure. <laughs> and then, so... Well, this wasn't originally going to be an on-air script. At, at first, you were just like, oh, let's just, you know, smash our two characters together. And, and then like, I was okay. like, let's read then, it. Because like, like, it's so yeah. good. Like, five posts in. Yeah, like, five yeah. posts in, you're like, this is going on-air. I'm like, okay. Because it's so good. Oh, thank you. Well, let's quit telling them how good it is and let's show them. Yeah, let's yes. just keep taunting them. But, yeah, <laughs> should we have a mature content warning? Cause this no, is like, just read it. It's got, like, yeah, alcohol. We only mentioned There's alcohol. alcohol in yeah, well, the they're adults. It's, like, so alcohol and So, there is completely Mild, legal rated, drinking rated in this tea. story. <laughs> this is rated T, <laughs> not rated... Isn't it rated, it's rated K E ten plus. plus. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody that came to hear George's story leave the room. So as we can read George's story. Yes. <laughs> I saw my dad drinking when I was three. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I okay. mean, it was one beer and he had friends over. This oh. has no title to it, but yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I was okay. just about to ask you for All the right. title. I guess just Russell and Quinn. Okay. Okay. The fluorescent light to the bar flickered slightly in the dead of the night. Inside sat Russell Ramiro, a man in his twenties. He stared at his empty glass. Another drink, sir. The bartender asked. Russell opened his lips. He was about to say yes, but he looked down and shook his head. No, this was going too far. He couldn't get drunk anymore. It was hurting his friends, and it was hurting her, Rosanna. Ugh. He needed to be responsible. No, thank you. <laughs> Suit yourself. Russell began to swirl what was left of his previous drink in his glass. A man with a short buzz cut black hair sat down at the bar stool next to the other. He was wearing black dress pants, a black blazer, and a white dress shirt, and a black tie. He took off his fedora and rested it on the table. I love a bourbon, he said to the bartender as he scratched the scruff on his chin. He pursed his thick lips and nodded to the man next to him. He was on a mission tonight, a mission to hunt down the owner of the bar and steal something from him. You see, the man in the black suit was a con artist, one of the best to ever live. He would see his deeds in the paper the next morning and smile, knowing that he had made the headlines yet again. That was another perk that came with his job. Had enough to drink? He asked the man, trying to make conversation and blend in with his environment. Russell looked over at the other man. They were wearing similar clothing. Very similar. Russell wore a black sleeveless vest that was unbuttoned over a white dress shirt. They both even had fedoras, although Russell's was still on his head. The only big difference was Russell's tie was red. Eh, maybe this guy had just gotten off work too, Russell thought to himself. <laughs> Russell rubbed his temples at the thought of work. Being a journalist these days was no easy task. Something was always going down in this town. Fire here, robbery there, scandal over yonder. Ugh. With tired eyes, Russell looked over at the other. Yeah, I think so. Did both of them have black hair too? Or was that just the light? The bartender returned with a glass and the man in the black and white suit nodded. He held the glass in his hand with his elbow on the table. You okay? You don't look so good. Russell glanced away for a moment. Were his troubles written all over his face again? Gosh, was he always this transparent? Oh well, he scratched his head. He took a quick sip of his drink as he observed the man. He smiled and wiped his mouth with the back of his hand. Hey, I like your sense of style. Where'd you get your clothes? He teased with a chuckle that made his stomach hurt from his pants being a bit too tight. A smile tugged at the edge of Russell's lips. Well, this guy was in high spirits and the friendly laugh was helping to lift his mood. <laughs> he looked over. Talking to this guy might help him get his mind off things. Um, I got them at a suit store uh, down at the mall a while back. Uh, the tie is relatively new, though. And the fedora I've had since forever. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, I like your fedora, too. The man in the black suit nodded and took another sip of his drink while the man spoke. He held the glass by the rim, his index finger being the only one not holding the glass. Thanks. I've had mine forever, too, he said, motioning his head to the hat on the counter. He sat the glass down and opened his blazer, revealing a tin cigarette case. As he did so, he looked around the room very subtly, trying to find the man he was after. Want to smoke? Russell shook his head at the idea of smoking. He tried that once, too. It went terribly. He did it for about a week. It made him feel cool, but he had a terrible coughing fit afterwards. And he decided it just wasn't worth it anymore. 
But from time to time, he'd still miss the feeling of having a cigarette in his mouth, so he'd often suck on a toothpick instead. That couldn't really do him any harm. Uh, thanks, but no thanks. Suit yourself? The man said as he put, on, he put one in his mouth, tucking the tin box away again. He pulled out a lighter and spoke as he lit his cigarette. I can't tell you how many times I tried quitting. He stashed the lighter away and held the cigarette with his thumb in the tips of his fingers. He didn't hold it like the typical person did, like between the index and middle fingers. It felt more comfortable for him to hold it with all his fingers. It was something real, something solid. For once, he could enjoy the fact that the cigarette was real and not part of a con. He could always be himself when he was smoking. Maybe that was another reason he loved it so much. He looked at the corner of the room, spotting his target. He looked away quickly and tried to make more conversation. Name's Quinn, if you were wondering. This guy obviously was innocent, and it wasn't like he was giving out his last name or anything. Russell wanted to extend his hand for a handshake, but he figured the other was probably using his dominant hand to smoke with. Oh, Quinn's a pretty cool name. It's nice to meet you. I'm Russell Ramiro. Russell could have sworn he saw Quinn's eyes jolt over for a minute. What was that all about? Meh, it probably wasn't anything he had to worry about. At least he hoped it wasn't. Quinn nodded. So this guy used his full name. <laughs> he was definitely innocent. Nice to meet you, Mr. Ramiro. The shorter man took the cigarette out of his mouth and sipped his glass and smiled, resting his elbow on the counter. Hey, your name sounds familiar. You write for the papers? Russell looked over, a bit surprised that the stranger knew of his works. Most people didn't recognize him for his work as a journalist. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I do. I write for the local newspaper in town, and a few other places. The man hesitated for a minute. He wasn't sure if he wanted to talk about work right now. After all, it was the thing stressing him out. But he was proud of the articles he wrote. Eh, what to do? Uh, so yeah, Russell Ramiro. Local journalist. Uh, that's me. Uh, uh, what about you? Quinn took another sip of his glass before returning the cigarette to his mouth. The man seemed to be ashamed of his work or something. Maybe he just didn't want to talk about it. I'm an antiques dealer. He answered out of the side of his mouth, his lips surrounding the end of the cigarette. It was a lie, but it might as well be the truth. I buy and sell old stuff. I always like to look my best as a businessman. He began tugging on his tie, feeling a bit claustrophobic, but he had to keep it on. It was a rule to remind himself he wasn't allowed to fully let his guard down. He was there with a purpose, and this Russell man wasn't allowed to know. An antiques dealer. Huh. I can honestly say you're the first one of those I've met. Russell noticed the other as he tugged at his tie. Was he making him nervous or something? Or maybe it was the temperature. He had to admit it was a little warm. Eh, you don't hear much about people like me anymore. He chuckled at his own little joke. Of course people never heard of him. His deeds possessed no face, no name. He was just the random robber that was always heard about and never caught. He stopped tugging at his tie and cleared his throat. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just a little warm. He said as he began taking off his blazer and rolled up his sleeves. And hey, you're the first, journal first journalist I meant. It's ironic, because I've heard a lot of your work, actually. It's, it's kind of like meeting a famous person, in a way. Really? A full-fledged smile grew on Russell's face. It really felt good to be recognized for his works. Uh, thanks. That means a lot to me. Has any of my work in particular caught your interests? Quinn sucked in some of the smoke and blew it out, making sure to face it away from Russell. Of course. If I didn't, do you really think I would have brought it up? You don't just go up to someone and say, oh, hey, I've read your stuff and it sucks. Most of the time, you don't, you don't say anything at all. He took a sip of his drink before continuing. But yes, I love your work and the robberies lately. Always intrigues me. Maybe it's because I deal with items like that. He rubbed the tip of the cigarette in a nearby ashtray before sticking it back in his mouth. Russell frowned a bit. Ah, the robberies. There have been so many of those lately. Hey, this is gone, or oh, we're missing that. Seems like we're having a lot more of them lately, too. Russell rubbed a stiff shoulder. Uh, but you know what the really interesting part is? Mm. Quinn let out a small hum before he swallowed the last of his drink. Everyone I interview has absolutely no idea who the crook is. They say there's some sort of mastermind, never leaving behind a trace. The man let out a breath of frustration. 
<sighs> if nothing else, it does make it for an interesting story, though. Quinn secretly chuckled in his head, mm-hmm. glad to hear that his deeds hadn't gone unnoticed. This guy seriously had no clue who he was talking to. It was pretty amusing, actually. He sipped the last of his drink as he watched the man rub his shoulder from the corner of his eye. Quinn wore a very subtle smile. He nodded and placed the cup down on the counter, motioning the bartender for another drink. Well, you aren't the police officers that are going after this person, are you? You have nothing to worry about. The bartender filled his glass. Thanks. He turned back to Russell. It gives you money by always having a contact to write about, doesn't it? He asked, looking through the top of his glass, his lips on the rim. Russell stayed silent. He knew that was true. He was a journalist, not a cop, but still. Uh, yes. It gives me money. With his index finger, Russell flicked the rim of his glass cup. (sighs) As well as a lot of stress. My boss keeps hammering me to find out who this robber is. He believes strongly that if we're the first ones to realize this news on the perp, our readership will skyrocket. (sighs) However, I, I can't tell him what I don't know. But he, he just won't get off my back about it. And with that, Russell took off his fedora and ran his fingers through his hair, sighing. He placed it back on his head. <sighs> Sorry, don't mean to tell note on you. Quinn drank more of his bourbon and held the glass in his hand, swirling it around in the cup, his eyes on the liquid that swished around. But his attention soon returned to the other man when he mentioned finding out who the robber was. He pursed his thick lips and rubbed his scruff with his index finger and thumb. No, it's fine. Hey, we're at a bar. What else is there to do besides unwind and occasionally hit on women? (laughs) But who has time for that anymore? He shook his head and took another drink. (laughs) The man's comment sent Russell a bit more at ease. Uh, So, uh, antiques, huh? Uh, what made you want to get into that? Quinn squinted his large brown eyes as he thought of a response. Well? He bit his lip and looked down into the glass again. He cleared his throat before continuing. I like older things. History always amused me, and I I can make money off of it. Plus, my parents were kind of rich, so I know my way around antique items. Russell paused. History was all right, but it had to be about something interesting. Uh, I see. Uh, so you come from a wealthy family, then? I'm pretty average myself. I got into journalism because I liked expressing myself. (laughs) I went through this phase in high school where I played guitar and screamed at the top of my lungs. But then I realized I I don't have to scream to be heard. (laughs) The dark-haired man spied his glass. Uh, Hey, bartender, uh, Mm. could I get a glass of water? His throat was getting dry. Quinn chuckled at the image of the man in front of him playing a guitar and blasting music. It was quite hilarious and yet something he'd like to see. The bartender nodded and walked over to Russell, filling his glass with water. The con man watched Russell intently. It was so easy to talk to him. He wanted to stay there and have a meaningful conversation with him the rest of the night, but he knew he had to leave at some point. I went through a phase in high school where I wanted to be everyone's psychologist, but that never happened. Got got myself in trouble for that one. He grinned, remembering his youth. But yeah, I wasn't super wealthy, but my parents had it pretty good. I went to a private school and got kicked out for trying to give kids medication through me. You see, I would go to a shrink and tell them I got sick, right? Or that I was experiencing some nervous breakdown, and they'd give me medication, and I'd um, just distri- distribute it to the kids and need it, but who couldn't pay for it. He smiled out of the corner of his mouth. I was pretty much their savior, but my mother and father hated me for it. They threw me out of school. He took another drink of his bourbon, wondering why the hell he was telling this to a stranger. Well... He didn't really have a woman to turn to, no wife, no girlfriend, and he hadn't been hit on by a man in a while. Those were always awkward. He never had time for anyone, really. But all he really wanted was someone to love who would work with him and enjoy his job as much as he did. But that day would never come, and he accepted that. Russell took a long sip and listened to what the other man had to say. Once everything was said, he spoke up. So, not super wealthy. So not like, uh, say, a guy who owned over half the town wealthy? He processed the other half of the information. He admired the man's efforts to be helpful towards others, but was he doing it the right way? He sounded like something of a Robin Hood, but couldn't things go wrong with a mix-up of medications? 
It was too bad he was thrown out of school, though. Um, sorry to hear about you, uh, not finishing. It sounds like you had, uh, good intentions, though. Quinn chuckled at the wealthy <laughs> joke. His parents becoming, t- his pants becoming too tight again. He really needed to buy new clothes, but he preferred to keep the money that he earned and spend it on other things like food and shelter, since he always moved from place to place. Material things didn't really matter to him, which was ironic because he dealt with prized items all the time and received an enormous amount of money for them. And it's okay that I didn't finish. School wasn't really my thing anyway. He said as he looked at Russell through the top of his glass, taking another drink. What about you? He didn't want to give any more information away. That was enough for now. He had to stop being Quinn Yates and be the phantom robber once more. But he needed to de-stress, just like the man next to him did. His job wasn't the greatest either, although it seemed like living the high life. Russell smiled a bit, reminiscing upon school life. Uh, well, I wasn't much for school either. I mean, I got good grades, but I wasn't like Velvet, Velvet, whatever it is, Velvet Victorian or something or anything. I don't know. I was just, I don't know, good at figuring things out, but not a mastermind. But oftentimes, I, I find myself wanting to express myself. So I started a band and played guitar, like I mentioned earlier, you know? Even did some martial arts on the side. I was very active and outgoing. Well then... Russell paused as his smile grew bigger. I met this girl. Her name was Rosanna. She'd always come to my gigs and practices, but she'd, like, always be in the back, not really saying much, but always writing. She was, like, always writing. And she wore these, like, the goofy glasses, too. And uh, one day I, I, I decided to talk to her. Turns out she was writer for the school's newspaper, and she was writing about my events. I thought the attention was pretty cool, so I started talking to her more and more. We got to know each other pretty well. And, uh, we got pretty close. He took a sip of his water and then spoke again. Uh, but one day we had a bit of a spat. She dared me that I won't last one day in the shadows of the writing world, and I dared her that she won't last one day out in the open world. So we both took the challenge and swapped. I began writing articles for the student newspaper, and she began getting into photography and eventually, like, posing for photo shoots and even the drawing club. And it turns out, we really liked what we were doing. As Russell swallowed another sip, he began to play with the ice in his cup again. Uh, We graduated and we went to college. I I pursued a journalism career, and uh, she pursued one in fashion modeling and photography. We started dating in college, too. (laughs) He set his glass down as he finished his story. And uh, we both got jobs in our major. I became a journalist half a year after graduating, and she got a gig with a famous photographer as a fashion model. (laughs) Although the downside of it all is that no one will ever believe me when I say I'm dating a fashion model. I mean, I even show them pictures of her and everything. Quinn listened intently to the man's story. It was very romantic and cute, which made him very uneasy. He didn't have anyone like that in his life. There was one woman that he met briefly who he wanted to get to know more about, but he didn't even get a chance to know her name. He just knew her as the woman with the long red hair. Hmm. The buzz cut brunette mumbled before smiling to hide what he was really feeling. Sounds cute, he said as he looked away and turned the end of his cigarette into the ashtray. He turned back at him, still smiling. You got pictures in? Russell's face lit up. (gasps) Of course! Russell reached into a satchel that was near by his seat. He quickly pulled out a fashion model magazine. On the cover was a woman with pink curly hair, smiling and posing in the season's trendiest dress. <laughs> Isn't she lovely? That's her on the cover. Quinn opened his blazer and reached for another cigarette. His hands stopped, his fingertips on the tin case. That's her? I've seen her in magazines many times before. Darn, you're a lucky fellow. He chuckled again, his eyes <laughs> on the picture and then on Russell. You must be a happy man. You believe me? Uh, th- that's awesome. No one ever believes me. <laughs> but yeah, I am really lucky. She's so nice. She loves to read, write, and laugh. Oh, she's just, just a lot of fun to be around, you know? Russell smiled, dimples exposed. He could go on and on about Rosanna, but he figured he'd save it for another time. He paused for a moment. He knew he should never come back here drinking again, for her sake. Because of his drinking, he'd usually wind up in a gutter the next morning and worry the living daylights out of her. She deserved better. She really did. Russell looked over at the man. 
If this was the last time he was coming to the bar, would this be the last time seeing this man, too? Uh, uh hey, uh, Quinn, right? Hmm? Russell said a bit sheepishly. Thanks. <coughs> Thanks for listening to me tonight. It, it really helps, you know? It made me for, feel more at ease, and I just wanted to say thanks. So, could we, like, swap numbers or something? I, I could treat you to coffee later or whatever. Quinn smiled broadly, curving towards his right side more than his left. Yeah, he supposed it would be difficult to believe someone when they said their girlfriend was a model. Instead of getting another smoke, Quinn sipped on his bourbon again. The dark brunette's eyes widened, not really sure what to say. He looked down, pursed his thick lips. Normally he didn't do this, but this guy seemed pretty nice. And he should at least have one normal friend. Yeah, sure. He said as he rested the glass down on the counter. I'm assuming you have paper and pencils in that bag of yours, right? Russell's smile grew. <laughs> what kind of journalist would I be if I didn't? He then quickly reached into his bag and pulled out a pad of paper. He flipped through a few pages to get to an empty sheet. They were filled with notes of places that had been robbed and different quotes people had given him. But he quickly turned past them. He didn't want to think about all that junk right now. He was having fun. The man then tore a page out and placed it on the table. He wrote his own number on it quickly and handed it to Quinn. The numbers were crisp and clear, as having good penmanship was one of Russell's strong points. It ran in his family, actually. Quinn smiled at the comment and watched as the man flipped through his notepad. He recognized one address that he had robbed before and felt a twinge in his stomach. Maybe this wasn't a good idea. But he was a good guy. He just would never reveal his real job and never offer him to stay at his place. Yeah, that should work. Jeez, your handwriting is gorgeous. Mine is going to look terrible in comparison. He chuckled as he wrote out the bottom of the page. He ripped it in half and kept the piece with Russell's number. There you go. You might want to text me first. I sometimes forget to, and I may misplace your number. He turned and saw his target leaving out the door. Now was his chance to sneak upstairs to the mob boss's room and steal the money from all those drug deals. Even though Quinn was a medical drug dealer in his past, he was highly against illegal drug dealers, especially since he was forced to do those when he was younger. I gotta be heading out soon. Got stuff to do. He said as he put on his fedora and winked. I'll see you around sometime. Russell nodded. Uh, it felt like end it was ending too soon, but he was glad it happened all the same. And at least this wouldn't be the end. He dipped his fedora too, trying to be as cool as the other. See you later, Quinn. Have a good night. Quinn grunted as he stood up from the bar stool, not used to the change in height. He rested his hand on the brim of his hat and tugged it down. Oh, I most certainly will. <laughs>